So that's the story of how the mag stripe came to be. But with it being so easy to skim, we had to find a way to make our card safer. The solution? To embed the card with its very own microchip, also known as chip and pin. Unfortunately, you can't just iron a microchip onto a piece of plastic. Modern bank cards need a slightly more sophisticated assembly. Thames Technology is one of the few companies in the UK producing bank cards from scratch. From this factory, they make almost 8 million of them a year. Have you got your wallet on you? No. This is general manager Shay Colford. Have you got your wallet? Can I borrow it? OK, wait, wait. Right, so to me, the first thing that jumps out at me is his rail card, where he looks very lovely. <laughs> when you look at these things, they're sort of all the same, but are you looking at those and seeing different things to what I'm seeing? Yeah, so with that particular one, you'll see that's a luminous ink, and you'll see along the edge, it's an orange core. Yeah. So the colour of that mag stripe yeah. is different to the normal one. Oh, yeah. So that's how it's evolved over time, so with different finishes, different materials and different personalisation methods. You know, when you're in a restaurant with friends and everyone mm -hmm. puts their cars in, I imagine that's an exciting moment. You look at you. every single one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Thanks, you will look, Chris. I'll just I'll hold on to that for you. Don't worry about it. I promise we'll get to chip and pin in a minute, but let's just see how Shay makes bank cards first. The bank card starts its life as simple blank sheets of plastic, which are loaded into a giant printer. Then, Forrest, or rather Dorothea's magstripe, is added. The printouts are sandwiched between two laminate sheets and popped into an oven. This is basically a sandwich toaster. Or less. <laughs> <laughs> what comes out is a solid piece of plastic, which is then punched out into individual bank cards. And now the bit we've all been waiting for, how the chip is installed. And this is where we place the chip into the card. So we create the pocket where the chip is going to sit. The chip is then glued into the card. We then do various electrical testing to make sure it's live. And then that's a completed card, so take one out. Look at that. How strange to have something at the end that feels so familiar. We might think we're familiar with our bank card. But have you ever had a close-up look? I mean, really close. I've got the chip from a bank card under a microscope here. This is the underside of it, the bit that you never see. There's all sorts of detail. There's the little chip in the middle, there's these gold wires holding it in place, and the circuitry around the edge. So why is the chip so much more secure than the more traditional mag stripe? Well, the mag stripe gives you the same number every single time, whereas the chip is much cleverer. It's more like a miniature computer, and it gives you a unique code every time that it's used. Unlike the mag stripe, the chip doesn't reveal all the data needed to copy the card. The information the chip sends changes every transaction, which makes it far harder to copy. It's an ingenious device. And there are a few competing claims about who originally came up with the idea for it. But there's one story that I particularly like. It's a story about the eccentric French inventor Roland Moreno, because he said that the idea came to him in a dream. A dream about signet rings. Signet rings were a very big hit during the Middle Ages. And the signet, that's the picture in the middle, it would either be a family crest or a monogram or some really intricate picture. Essentially anything that made it really, really hard to copy. So then, if you were ever sending an important document to prove that it came from you, you would use this almost like a signature by pressing it into hot wax. Legend has it that way back in the 14th century, King Edward III declared that his official documents should be signed using his unique signet seal. Essentially an early version of if you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. 